Welcome back to Node Summit Live from San Francisco, California. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com and SiliconAngle.tv. And this is theCUBE, our flagship telecast, where we go out to the events, live stream, and talk to the smartest people we can find, entrepreneurs, thought leaders, executives, venture capitalists, and uh, extract the knowledge and share that with you. And I'm um, joined with Clint Finley, the editor of DevOps Angle, which we launched today. And we're here at Node Summit, the inaugural conference for Node.js. And, and uh, we, we try to talk to the smart people, and uh, sometimes we get the inventors. Uh, and we're here with Ryan Dahl, the inventor of Node.js. Uh, Ryan, welcome to the, uh, the Cube. Hello. Hi. <laughs> okay, so, so uh, we've interviewed Doug Cutting in the past, uh, inventor of, uh, creator of Hadoop. Uh, you created Node.js, obviously huge success. Um, we had a chance to talk on a Monday night at the uh, Thirsty Bear um, and told some of the story, but really want to say just congratulations um, for just doing some great work and it's, it's evolved into uh, its own budding ecosystem and industry. Uh, so I want to first say congratulations. Thanks. Um, so tell us the story of, of Node.js. Why did it all came together for you? Uh, just for, for us, tell the folks kind of how it all started um, and take us through that, the life of uh, of how it all began. What, what problem were you trying to solve originally? Um, so I, I guess the, the original, original problem was, was a long time ago um, when people were trying to figure out how to do uploads via HTTP. And uh, it used to be that if you uploaded a file, you, you, would, you would kind of post to the, to the form and it would, just, it would just kind of freeze up on you. You wouldn't, you wouldn't gain interaction. Maybe at best you get a little spinny, spinny dial or something. Um, but these days you, you get a progress bar that kind of says how much, how much you're uploading. Um, and it, at, at some point, like I would guess 2006 or so, I, I, I saw a demo in uh, probably Flickr, although I, I can't remember exactly, um, where, where they actually showed this. You would, you would post an image and you saw the progress bar like going and it's just like blown away. Like, oh my God, how do, the, how do they do that? Um, and you would think like, oh, the, the web browser obviously is sending a file via some socket to some server. The web browser obviously knows how much of the file has been sent, so it's exposed by the, by the DOM. But it, it, it's actually not exposed client side to, to the user. Um, the way that, that, these, that these progress bars are is that as you're uploading a file, you reach around on the side and and ask the server, you know, how much have I uploaded? How much have I uploaded? And the server responds, okay, three percent, five percent. And so in this way, you, the user can kind of see how how far how how the progress bar is going, uh, how how the upload is going. Solving this problem, doing this sort of thing in in the. Uh, Web stacks that were around at the at the time was, is is difficult because it it, it requires uh, handling handling m multiple requests at the same time, right? You're you're somebody's uploading this file that could be going on for for several minutes, and um, you at the same time you have this extra request coming in that you know needs to respond at, 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 concurrently to the upload. Um, it turns out that a lot of the frameworks were uh, uh, designed in a way that, that they made the assumption that, that you know, a request response is something that, that kind of happens instantaneously and that your entire web development experience should be abstracted in, as a function that you get a request and you return a response and that is, that is the extent of your context. Um, so Node uh, was originally born out of this problem and thinking about this and how, how can you how can you handle these two things at the same time and obviously there's many different ways of, of doing this but non blocking sockets is is one way um, and so so node is node is more or less the idea that exploring the idea of what if everything was non blocking what if you you never you never waited for any I O to happen you you just use all, only non blocking I O what falls out of that, and, and pairing that with JavaScript. Um, and turns out you can, you can make a web upload progress bar with this, so uh, among other things. But it, it basically comes out of the, uh, it turns out a lot of problems are, can basically sum, be summed up as this, you know, sort of interactive websites where you need to 
do more than one thing at a time, whether it's a chat where you know one person sends a message and you broadcast it out to everybody else, or if it's a game where you're moving around and you need to relay those movements to other people, it's all more or less the same problem. As long you need a programming environment that somehow abstracts, it gives you the right abstraction for, for dealing with all of these different events happening. When did you see Node start to really get the the lift up, and obviously you were you're taking around, you're playing with Node, doing these things you're mentioning. Um, when did it kind of start clicking? Like, wow, this is really going on. Um, so, in two early 2009, I, I uh, had this idea. I was like, okay, JavaScript and non-blocking I/O, great. Let's let's put those together and see if we can build something useful with it. Um, and uh, I worked on that for about six months, uh, maybe a bit less, four, four months or so, um, before I had like a demo that I could start using. And kind of a, as I was developing this, I, I built a chat application at the same time. So, so kind of with the framework, I, I was building this chat thing. And after some time, I just realized like, wow, this is, this is like, you know, 200 lines of code, and I've I've got this chat server, and it's purely JavaScript. There's nothing other than JavaScript in here. It's just like, oh wow, wow, this is this is actually you know going from from something it just kind of playing around with the idea, neat idea, kind of academic maybe even, but to to something where where you realize that, holy crap, you can actually build things uh, in a reasonable amount of time with this. Uh, so what was the performance like at that time? You're like, wow, this is actually fast. Yeah, I, I mean, it, like it was it was good enough to handle tens of clients and, you know, have no lag basically. So so good enough. I, I, performance with Node, um, we spent a lot of time uh, making sure that that we're not we're not doing anything uh, overly stupid in, inside of it. So we, we we care about performance a lot. Turns out that 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 original the the 10x improvement that we got. By doing non-blocking I/O, that was the big that was the big choice. Since then, we we've been trying and trying and trying to explore other ways of, of doing performance. But you know, and we we've gotten some wins here and there. But more or less, the performance has been the same since since the original design. All right, so what happened next? Okay, you got you got to show people this, right? So like, hey, you call your best buddies up and say, hey, look at this. this is what, right. So <laughs> so at this time, like JavaScript, I, I think these days uh, it's recognized as kind of a language. But a couple of years ago, it was it was not really that way, right? It was it was this weird browser thing. But it, it was just beginning to be recognized as. You know, uh, Crockford came out with this book, uh, uh, JavaScript: The Good Parts, and people started thinking, "Oh, you know, actually, this is this is actually a programming language. People, you could actually design programs with it." Gmail was written. You had these these big complex applications being written in JavaScript, and and with that, some sort of respect for the language. Um, so the the JS Conf uh, was created by Chris Williams in uh, 2008, I believe. And um, the European version of that came out in, in 2009. And so I wrote them, and I was like, oh, I got this demo. I, I, you know, I, I really want to show this off at your conference. And they wrote back, and they're like, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, got, got me a slot there. And, and so, so I, I, I finally showed it off at, at this European conference. And it, it went really well. I gave um, it was the a standing ovation. Wasn't there? Uh, yeah, supposedly. <laughs> that, that's what they tell me. I was I was extremely nervous. I mean, I had been working on this thing for just like many months, and I was like super nerdy about it. And it's just like I, I had been practicing my presentation for like weeks before that. It's just like very very uh, wanting to show off, you know, what I meant by this because I felt like if I started talking about non-blocking I/O and blah blah blah, everybody's just going to like zone out entirely. Um, what was great was that I had a demo of a uh, IRC server written in Node, so people could connect with non-web browsers, just with their IRC clients, and, and connect to the Node IRC server and start chatting. And which, thank God, I mean this this demo worked because I I, I felt like the the entire talk was was very philosophical and and kind of abstract. But then you see like, oh, holy shit, here is an IRC server written in fucking JavaScript, and it's 400 lines of code, and and this this is something that that kind of blew people's I, mind. Yeah, people people are like, wow, that is that is really something new, actually. 
Awesome. So people have been doing JavaScript on the on the server side since the '90s. So what was it about V8 and Node.js that made that made the difference? That now people are really excited about doing JavaScript on the server side. Right. So so. Uh, yeah, as you said, there, there's been a lot of server-side JavaScript. Uh, none of them have stuck. Uh, several reasons. One, um, they kind of had this very traditional model of, of how you present the, the the server to the user, right? This this request response. You know, you you get a request, you do a bunch of stuff, then you return the response, but you're not. You don't acknowledge the 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 presence of other requests going on. Concurrently to you, so it has this very, this very simplified model, which um, is fine and works, but was not enough of a differentiator from Ruby on Rails and uh, Django and and PHP to to really mean anything to people. It was like, oh, cool, I could do it in JavaScript, but you know, I've I've got Rails here, it works fine. It's not that big of a deal to think in Ruby and in JavaScript. The other aspect was it was all in Rhino, uh, which uh, the the um, JavaScript interpreter on top of the JVM, which is notoriously slow. Um, and it wasn't until uh, 2008 when Chrome came out that that people started realizing that that oh wow companies are putting a lot of effort into improving the the JavaScript performance to the degree that you had you know the the um, very professional teams uh, working on on these on these uh, virtual machines. So so now you have you, it, in in 2008, Chrome comes out with with V8, and you realize, oh wow, okay, so so Google is really pushing JavaScript performance, and they see this as a way of dominating the market. If if they can make JavaScript faster, people will start using their web browser because Gmail runs faster, and suddenly Mozilla is, is put on edge, and they, they have to now make their JavaScript, uh, 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 their, their spider monkey, uh, Yanger monkey stuff work faster. And it, suddenly it becomes this benchmarks co contest. Uh, Microsoft as well needs, needs to now step up its game and, and start making this fast. And then suddenly JavaScript is, is faster than, than Ruby and Python, like basically overnight. And, and so it, it seems like in 2008, this is a very good language to start investing in. You get very good compute performance out of it. And so at, it, it was at JSConf. You, you presented all this at, at JSConf. Here's, here's Node.js. Here's how it's different from the old server, server side stuff. And that, that's how it took off. It was just, it just, people saw it there and just went nuts with it. Yeah, so, so uh, as I said, I, I had been working on this for a long time, it, it, um, and by this conference, I was basically like out of money. Like I could no longer afford to work on this project full time, just just on my own. So I, I went around looking for uh, for sponsors for for the project so that I could continue to work on it. And uh, various people were interested in doing this, uh, and I, I went around and talked to to a lot of people. Um, but the the most promising one came from Join. Um, who were like, oh, you know, we build um, this data center software. And what we want is we, we actually want Node to, uh, to be used for our data center software. Like, we, we don't really have an interest in monetizing Node itself, but, but we want our, our software to, to run well. And this is a perfect thing for, for building our, our own data center stuff. Um, and... Uh, so this this sounded great to me because because little little uh, little programs sitting there responding to events, uh, little demons sitting around the the data center doing various things sounded like a, a very good use case for Node. Um, so uh, I, I teamed up with Microsoft uh, for, with uh, with uh, Joint and uh, moved to San Francisco um, and have been working on it full time since then. And it's just been kind of a constant. Uh, Progression of of, of uh, pushing this technology since then, fixing bugs and introducing it to, to new companies and convincing people and and talking to them about it and uh, I think we've we've had a fairly good linear growth for for two years or so, which is which is pretty pretty crazy. 
What have you learned if you go for the folks out there who are open source is great for a lot of innovation. So what can you share with the other folks out there who are working on open source that that uh, work hard and and you know want to do a, a project might have a success like a node, not not directly competing, but you know what I'm saying, like you know, people out there working hard, what, what can you share with them of lessons learned or things you wish you could get you get back and do differently or not do differently? What would you share with other uh, folks out there working on some of these great op new open source stuff? I, I, I think there's a lot of people who uh, feel, I, I think one thing um, that we've done very well in Node is integrate other people into the community and, and just be very open about uh, what we're working on and trying to bring people into the project. Um, so I, I've spent a lot of time, people will contribute a patch which is not necessarily appropriate for Node uh, style is bad, you know, it's, it's, it introduces other bugs, it's really big or whatever. It's some feature that I could hammer out in a couple minutes because I'm totally familiar with the code base, but I'll, I'll spend the next week going back and forth with these people saying, you know, okay, you know, fix this and fix that, and then they'll give me another revision. I'll say fix this and fix that, and, and just kind of going back and forth and talking about how they could get it into the code base. Because w w when you come to a new code base, when you're you know, just a random person on the internet and you're contributing to an open source project, you don't know all of the, the things going on in that code base, right? So there, there, there's something that, that needs to... You need to be stewardship. You, 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 need to, you need to get introduced to it. And I think that a lot of projects will, will kind of reject these sort of contributions or not, not take the time to really integrate these people to it. But you know, if you do this and you spend a week with somebody and get their patch in and you know, make sure that they're on the authors list and, and everything, then you have a person who, who now knows how the code base is going and can so spend, start so contributing you're saying, more. So, so what you're saying, spend the time, embrace the people coming in who want to work, help, help, and work help them people, through it. Help people get involved and help show them how to contribute to yeah. the project. If, they're, if they want to spend an hour of their time doing a patch for your project, you should spend an, a week of your time pulling them, pulling them in, and hopefully you're going to get somebody who, who then contributes more. That's great, and that's always great about community. It shows your commitment and brings them, socializes them into the, into the project. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, the community of Node is, is really where it's at, right? The, the runtime itself is possibly nice, but you know, the, the community modules and all of the people that we have is, is, is what's important. Okay, so now this is where I put you on the spot, and you could be political, and it's okay, I won't be offended if you don't say any names, but of all the companies here, which ones are your favorite? Um, that, that you say, not from a company standpoint, but like coolness, like that's a cool thing of implementation of Node. Uh, okay, so the, the, <laughs> the one that shocked me yesterday was uh, uh, Tile Mill, which is doing uh, map, a mapping application. So you, you can make custom uh, a Google Maps type, type uh, map, mapping applications with, with you know, data points and, and whatnot. But, but you, you, can, you, you actually build these things on locally on, on your desktop. So they, they made a Windows application using the, the Node port to Windows, have this desktop application with Node inside of it that allows you to kind of create a map and uh, then generates this file that can then be uploaded to a server where they're hosting it also with Node and, and display these maps. So they, they have this great database of all these different maps that you can kind of overlay with each other and, and this great desktop product and it, it just looks amazing. It's, it's just something uh, that, I, I don't know, I'm always amazed <laughs> seeing these things. It's just like, wow, I, I would have never thought Node would be used. Yeah, and we know, actually had way. those guys on theCUBE yesterday, so anyone who's watching right now, you can find that interview. Uh, Mapbox is the, is the name of the company. Mapbox? Mapbox. I, I thought it was Tile Mill? Tile Mill is the program, Mapbox is I the see. company. Yeah, okay. and, and yeah, you can find our interview with them on Silicon Angle TV. Yeah, and we uh, also talk with Voxer too, which is getting a lot of uh, traction as well. What do you think of those guys? Oh yeah, so, so Voxer is, is our, our, our biggest cus customer, so to speak. Um, because uh, they are just pushing massive amounts of, of data through Node. They, they have this big distributed system with hundreds of Node instances doing voice over IP through this thing. So they, they have this walkie-talkie app. You, you click the button, you say, hey, what's up, blah, blah, blah. And it gets distributed to your followers. Um, but voice, it goes up through Node and gets spread out and then down, down into React. And so they're just pushing massive amounts of data through Node. And they're finding problems. They, they just 
recently in November started really blowing up with, with many users. Um, and uh, so they're, they're finding a lot of our biggest problems at scale. So they'll, they'll find seg faults way before anybody else does. And uh, so we're, we're in close contact with, with Boxer. They, they are- Quite impressive. They're, they're driving our, our kind of uh, emergency fixes. <laughs> I think they're embedded in the code base. Uh, <laughs> no, that's a great, we had Matt's great guy. We talked to him last night too. He shared some kind of uh, inside baseball and some of the numbers, which we didn't talk about on the cube. He wanted, wanted to respect his privacy, but uh, very big success story, great growth there. So um, anything that surprised you here at this conference that, that, you, uh, that you go, wow? Not just companies. I mean, like, uh, just, the, just, just the, the, the pure number. I mean, the, this conference was really about showcasing, uh, you know, what, what's what's going on and make, making sure that that it's it's visible to you know out, outside of the Node community, like the the number of projects going on. And I, I of course, am, am in this community, and and I, I've talked to a lot of these people here. But even so, like sitting sitting there uh, in in the last uh, session here and just seeing company after company after company, like. With with their product that they've built in Node, and you know this thing and this thing and this thing, and it's just like it's it's very overwhelming, uh, yeah. a lot more than I've I've heard about, and I, I, I'm just I don't know it's it's just shocking. Well, the community is very respectful and professional. We really enjoyed meeting a lot of the people here. We haven't talked to all the companies. We talked to some, most of them. Um, just great, great crowd. I mean, I mean, good people doing some great work, and the apps are going to change hopefully society and make the world a better place and make them do more uh, with more resources and less less cost. So it's a huge, huge win. I think just the beginning. I guess my final question will be to you: Is what's next in your mind and the vision of Node? And as this ecosystem starting to develop out and and flourish. Uh, Further, what's next for Node? So we're we're very much focused on growing the community and uh, making sure that that the experience for people coming into Node is 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 a good one. And for a long time, uh, growing the community meant making Node itself better, like fixing bugs and fixing performance and 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 making sure that you know it compiles on window, it, it runs on Windows. Um, those were those were our bottlenecks for a while, but now actually it's it's running pretty well. It runs on Windows. We have installers for Macintosh, right? You can go to the website, you can download it. That's no longer our bottleneck. What our bottleneck is is bringing in all the third-party modules and like br building a website where people can go to Node and discover everything, uh, all all of the the various modules that that you can just kind of plug into your app. We have over six thousand modules now for Node, and it's becoming a real problem that people come to it and they're like, oh, I need to connect to MySQL. There's 20 options. Like, am I going to sit down and evaluate all of these code bases? Um, no, you need some sort of rating system. You need some sort of way of, of showing people what is the best one, what's the up and coming one, you know, which ones are total shit and you should not use. And, and we just need to make that all very, very clear to people immediately. And that's what we're not doing a good job at right now, and that's what we'll be working on. Well, we'll certainly help you get the word out and anything you need from Silicon Angle. We're uh, looking forward to working with you guys with DevOps Angle. We're going to cover you guys and be part of that community. We love it. Great uh, success. We're here inside theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com with Clint Finley and Ryan Dahl, the uh, uh, creator of Node.js, huge momentum, great success, a lot of value, great performance, and uh, we're excited uh, to be here at Node Summit live in San Francisco. So we'll be right back with more interviews in five minutes. <laughs>